Ciao, welcome to Celebrating Culture. In this episode, we're gonna focus on how Italians and Sicilians honor their ancestors. Going back centuries in Sicily, Sicilians would have processions, often carrying large statues throughout the streets. St. Agatha is one of them. The statue of St. Agatha is brought out into the cathedral and the churches around Catania. E passo bene, infatti, allo Spirito Santo e a noi, di non imporvi altro obbligo. In Kenner, Louisiana, the procession of St. Rosalia goes back to the 1890s. St. Rosalia is the patron saint of Palermo and called upon during plagues and pandemics such as COVID. The procession leaves the Church of Our Lady of Perpetual Help and does two miles throughout the neighborhood, stopping at the St. Rosalia Cemetery. The priest and some of the parishioners walk barefoot. Both men and women take turns carrying the statue of St. Rosalia. In Sicily, funeral processions from the church to the cemetery started in the 16th century and are called the dirge. A newspaper from the early 1900s mentions Vincent Marsala's dirge in Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Today in New Orleans, the terms jazz funeral and second line are used. The term second line is referring to the mourners as opposed to the immediate family. Another important Sicilian custom is November 2nd, which can be called All Souls Day or the Day of the Dead. It's a day of prayer and remembrance for the faithful departed. All Souls Day is celebrated by the Sicilians of Monroe, Louisiana. This remembrance can also be celebrated on All Saints Day, for which many Catholic schools is a holiday. On either of these days, Italians go to the cemetery and have a blessing on the graves of their ancestors, often accompanied with food, as in the case in New Orleans. Families visit and clean the grave sites. Home altars are decorated with family photos and candles. And children are gifted a special basket called the canastro of chocolates, pomegranate, and other gifts from their ancestors. Because of the gifting of sugary sweets and the emphasis on sugar puppet decorations, the Commemoration Day has spurred local Sicilian events, such as Note di Zucorro, or Night of Sugar, in which communities celebrate the dead. Perhaps this is how our own trick-or-treating got started. Our ancestry is personal. In fact, many parts of this documentary series have been to honor my own ancestors. In this episode, we will interview members of my mother's side and father's side on how our ancestors are honored. We'll go to Gino's Restaurant, which was opened by my mother's parents in 1964 and operated today by my Aunt Phyllis and Uncle Frank. On my dad's side, my cousins work with a nonprofit. That nonprofit honors my Aunt Teresa. Aunt Teresa was a dedicated healthcare professional and very instrumental in raising funds for cancer patients to cover their extra expenses. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Hi, we hope you've enjoyed this episode of Celebrating Culture. Awe News has interviewed hundreds of people and produced dozens of episodes for local broadcasting awesome people doing great things to inspire us all. If you'd like to watch a specific interview, please visit our YouTube channel and subscribe. Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. We're here today at Metairie Cemetery, which is one of the top 10 cemeteries in America. And if you're in New Orleans, it's a place to see. Part of the cemetery, there are about a dozen mausoleums that were erected during the 1880s and 1890s to the Italian societies. And I'm with Father Damien Zablocki, Father actually was here for All Saints Day and blessed this tomb for Contessa Antolina. Father, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So Father, All Saints Day and the Contessa Antolina group, these little towns all form these mausoleums. Did they reach out to you? They've always invited me to come and now that I'm a priest, I volunteered myself. I showed up anyway, I think, even if they didn't invite me, but they've always made sure to have me for any of the blessings or any of the get-togethers that they have. Historically, All Saints Day is a day for going to the cemeteries. The blessing that you do, where does that come from? So the blessing that I use for that is really the blessing of graves from the Roman ritual, which is the traditional set of books before 1962, before the liturgy was updated. Now this one, the Contessa Antolina group just restored this. Yeah, it's beautiful, yeah. We also say that there's a need to restore other ones here. They're some of the most beautiful monuments I've ever seen, and they're such a beautiful homage to all of the Italians that were here, and the culture, and to their faith. As time goes on and we lose some of those most important Italians here, who are spreading the culture and they kind of fall into disrepair because there's no one to make known that their family members are here anymore or that they were built in honor of their towns where they came from. From what I understand in the early days when those villagers came in, they would get together per the town, whether it be Shefalu or Santa Lina, they would build a mausoleum, everyone would pitch in so they had a place to be buried. Yeah, the first one I actually know of is St. Louis number one. That one is the Sicilian tomb there. It has St. Helena standing on top of the Holy Cross. Yes, and it's actually became more famous 
is from Easy Rider. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not not for the right that. reasons, yeah. but uh, <laughs> you're right. That is the first one, and, and I think the gentleman that built it is actually buried in it. Yeah, it's a very beautiful testimony to all of the blood, sweat, and tears that the Sicilians and the Italians in general put into the city of New Orleans. One that's of interest to you to restore. Yeah, I do. There's one in particular. It's from Piano de Greci. I think it's now called Piano dell'Albanese. It has a beautiful carved image, statues of Our Lady that are actually from an icon of Our Lady of the Sign. So it's a, a statue of an icon. It was one of the first ones I had ever encountered here. And it was by mistake that I encountered it. I was driving around, and but I spend a lot of time going there to visit and praying because it's a miraculous image from the town in Sicily. There's some other saints that the Sicilians really appreciate. Saint Rosalie is one. Saint of Rosalie, yes. Can you tell me about her? Saint Rosalie, I had experienced the first time in Brooklyn on 18th Avenue, I believe it was. They have a huge feast day in honor of Saint Rosalie. They have the Society of Santa Rosalia there, and I remember going to the procession and hearing people say it, "Viva la Santuzza." When I came to Louisiana and I thought there was going to be no Italians here, no Sicilians, I discovered the Saint Rosalie procession at Our Lady Perpetual Help in Kenner, and so I had gone every single year and actually celebrated the mass in honor of St. Rosalie. She's actually connected to ending a pandemic. Yeah, I believe they would bring her relics out whenever they were threatened with an illness and process the relics around. And one of the stories of her miraculous intercession was the plague had been hitting and they brought the relics to the city and it ended right after that. And we see almost with COVID, a resurgence of that connection. A lot of the saints from Sicily and Italy were all ones who had a lot of miraculous intercessions, especially in sickness because it was so common. You had a mass for St. Lucy. A lot of the Italians venerate St. Lucy. A lot of people pray to her for her intercession with people who have problems with their eyes. And we have her relic and the people venerate it. And she's in Seracusa in Sicily. Yes. And also one that I found out in Independence was St. Expedite. Yeah. There's a statue of him at Our Lady of Guadalupe on Rampart Street. So St. Expedite, so he was probably an early Christian martyr. Very often when the names were not found of the relics of who these martyrs were, they would give them names that corresponded to their virtues. Some people tell a story, he arrived in a case to New Orleans, a statue arrived and it said Expedite on the outside, so they thought it meant St. Expedite. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'd prefer to believe it was because of his virtue of praying so quickly for the people who go to him. He's holding up the cross that says Hodie, which means today. And he's stamping on a crow, which says tomorrow. When it comes to our faith, when it comes to anything that we have to do relating to our salvation, we have to act now and not wait because you never know if you will not have a tomorrow. And I understand they almost became a martyr because he wanted to become a Christian so fast. Those are beautiful stories taken from the Roman martyrology of those saints. So I have a lot of people around who are going to the parishes who desire to be saints now. So hopefully they learn from him. From my travels, I found that independence, there was actually a Saint Expedite Society. That's how I first noticed him, that they had a banner there from the 1930s that someone had gotten through the depression and built a chapel in honor of Saint Expedite there. I'd like to have some of these saints still venerated. So I know one of the banners was given for protection to the chapel of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, the Latin Mass Chapel. So we're going to strive to have his feast day and make him more known again in the Catholic community here. So Father, if somebody wants to find out more and learn more about the saints in St. Lucy, we have a Facebook page, Our Lady of Mount Carmel Latin Mass Community on the North Shore. Um, you can just Google Our Lady of Mount Carmel Covington. They can find it that way and just call me. The phone rings directly <laughs> to my pocket. On All Saints Day, two to three o'clock, normally the Contessa Handelina people are right where we are standing. But they have set aside November 1st to be here and hopefully one day we'll see this whole row have people coming out to look at their ancestors because there's a beautiful row of mausoleums. It should, there's a lot of people who have relatives buried here. I'd like to get them back and we have to pray for the dead. That's what our faith teaches us.
Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Celebrating Culture. Our news spent five years touring Louisiana. We've interviewed countless numbers of people, the people that make it happen, that put on Mardi Gras, the chefs, the artists, the backbone of Louisiana. We've taken those interviews and made a show called Celebrating Culture. But we've also taken those interviews and put them in a tour app, New Orleans Insider Tours. To download the apps, all you have to do is point your phone at the flow code in the camera mode. Once you have the app downloaded, you'll have access to putting together the best game plan to experience in Louisiana. You can start with Little Palermo, which is 50 points of interest on the Italian community, and then go to Statue Stories and Spirits, over 150 stops in the French Quarter and CBD. Where to dine in New Orleans, what rooftop bars give you the best view, how to see the Gulf of Mexico from the coastal towns, driving up to the Bonnie and Clyde Museum near Shreveport, or up to Vicksburg. New Orleans and Louisiana are must see for everyone, and there's so much to see. So we hope you enjoy it, and as we say here, let the good times roll. Welcome to Gino's. Ciao, Bella. Hi, welcome back to Celebrating Culture. We're here today in Monroe, Louisiana at Gino's Italian Restaurant, and I'm with Mrs. Phyllis Jean Briscotta, who I also want to say is my aunt and my godmother. My good godson, como sta? God, come on, Bella bellissimo. <laughs> Bella bellissimo. Welcome to Gino's. And welcome to the show, Godmother. <laughs> <laughs> Fill me in, Godmother. Gino's opened in 1964. 1964, September. Daddy, Mother, Philip and I, my brother Frank. We've been working here ever since. Of course, now John, too. We've all worked here like you, Charles. You worked here over the years, too, growing up when you spend the summers with us. Everybody would tell Daddy, because he cooked so many meals for the Knights of Columbus when they were doing fundraisers around Monroe for all the schools and churches. And they would all tell, Gino, why don't you open up a restaurant? So they all talked to him to doing that and so he did eventually and we've been here 56 years thank the good lord our family and friends we've had great business and we're real proud and life has been good tell me about the, the beginning it's august 1964. daddy pack us all up and we go to new orleans we go to terramina's and he loved to shop at terramina's they had a big wholesale house there and he brought the tomato sauce and paste, caponata, different things back to cook with, to prepare his dishes with, because you couldn't get it all around Monroe. Of course, now you can. But back then, it was very rare to get anything like that. And Genoa salami and all the Italian breads. And of course, we went to Brocada's, got spumoni and canolas and Liedenheimer's, got the muffaletta bread and oh, all those wonderful different pastries. And he brought back to Monroe and we opened up. We started serving. <laughs> A lot of famous people have came through here, and well, for Louisiana they're famous, like Terry Bradshaw when he was at Louisiana Tech, Marianne Mobley when she was Miss America, because we used to have some of the pageant parties here back then on our patio. And of course we've had Governor McKeith and a lot of the governors have been through here, Edwards. Nungesser, the Lieutenant Governor, was here the other day presenting us with a wonderful award. I'm honored to be here tonight as Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Louisiana to honor you and your family for being in business over 57 years uh, with incredible food and hospitality to Louisiana. Thank you. So congratulations. Thank you very much. I understand the Duck Dynasty people here? Oh, very nice. The Duck people are so nice. And let me tell you, when they all sit around the table with their family, they do not touch any of their food until they've all said their prayers. But we thank the good Lord. We've had good families and good friends that have traded with us over the years. And that means a whole lot and for 56 years. Tell us about the patio. Well, the patio, Daddy always loved outdoors too. He loved to hunt and fish. And so naturally he wanted a nice patio out here. The front room, when Daddy first opened up, was a little delicatessen. And when he brought everything back from New Orleans, different items he put in the front, like imported Genoa salami and all, things you couldn't get around Monroe. And then gradually it got so busy up there, we didn't have enough family members to run it. So we closed it, we made it a dining room, and then another little smaller dining room. And then of course, we have the three dining rooms next door now. We converted mother and dad's home, and we've had many weddings and rehearsal suppers. When you come in, Gino's, you really get a, a taste of history. Yes, a lot of family photos are everywhere. My sister B used to say I had too many. She said, do you have any photos? that are not in a frame, because I love to display them and I put them all in frames. 
So Daddy's raised a lot of money over the years here with the Knights of Columbus because he was a grand knight. For all the parishes and schools and churches when back in the old days when they were raising money to add on. Different rooms and gymnasiums, football fields, different things. So he's always did that kind of work. And he'd have the whole Knights of Columbus in that kitchen cooking. Uh, and they would stay up all night. And while they were checking on the he would barbecue back then and make dirty rice. And while he was, they were doing that, he, he would have an all-night poker game going. <laughs> Those are some experiences, because <laughs> we had to clean up. <laughs> Tell me about it, Uncle Frank. Well, Frank retired from the Army after 25 years, and he's a good chef, just like Daddy. He loves to cook, and he's made a bunch of different unusual sauces that he's come up with, like the crawfish alfredo, shrimp alfredo. Oh, just some real unusual dishes. And so we have, you know, elaborated a little on the menu. What are some of the things people love on the menu? Oh, our lasagna is a famous one. And of course, they love the spaghetti and meatballs and our minestrone soup and our Italian salad that mother always made the homemade dressing for. And we continue to do that. You yourself are involved a lot with St. Matthew's Cemetery. Yes. Well, I love the cemetery because all our family and all our ancestors go way back or buried there. And I, I get pleasure in going there. We try to keep the graves up. And we still have Blessing of the Graves on All Souls Day. It's comforting to go there and visit them. And one thing about it, when you visit, no one talks back. <laughs> How did the Sicilian community get to Monroe? Well, a lot of them, you know, they docked, came in at New Orleans. And they gradually worked their way down up to different areas around North Louisiana, working in the sugar mills. And they saved their money and opened up these little grocery stores and they all had the grocery stores just about in the same area which is now the Civic Center around Oak Street. My grandparents, the Monaco family had a grocery store as well as my grandparents on the Briscata side. There's so many great people that I meet that seem to come up to you and say, oh yeah, I worked at Geno's when I was going to school. Oh great yeah, time. so many of them. We've had, oh well, we've had hundreds of students that have worked here over the years and some of them now are doctors, attorneys, accountants, just wonderful family people, too. Yeah, I've got wonderful kids, and their kids come in here and tell me stories about stories their dad told them or their mom told them about working here. Tell me, what has it like been working at Geno's and, and Phyllis and Frank? Well, it's been pretty much like a big welcoming environment. Like, you quickly become a part of the family. You learn a lot of crazy things, both about how to treat people, how things work in the food industry, but also how things work as like seeing people as people and you learn a lot of life lessons I would have never realized. Like Mr. Frank gives a chance to everybody. Uh, he doesn't see you as what you might have done, but what you can do. And with Miss Phyllis, I feel like she really embodies what it takes to create a small town feel. She knows so many people in Monroe and if she doesn't know you yet, she will know you by the end of the conversation. <laughs> I believe September will make my third year here at Geno's. I started working here when I moved up to Monroe for college. I only knew about two or three other people and Geno's definitely helped make Monroe a home for me. We have quite a bit of regulars who used to work here, uh, both at lunchtime and at dinner time that come in. Like Mr. Frank's son, John, he has his specialty that we call the Bruscato special. And it's a mozzarella cheese bread topped with our homemade olive mix. We have people who come in for their first dates. And for me as a server, that's definitely a very fun part of my job because I get to tell them the backstory about us. And I tell them that a lot of people here have made memories and it's fun to kind of see where we fit into both their memories and their love story. And I have one couple who they had their first date in our first booth inside. And he actually came back and proposed in that same first booth. Judy Hilton. Gino's is very romantic. The, the red seats, the, it, it's old Italian. And the music with Dino and Frank, there's, there's nobody that's more romantic than that. And so my husband and I come here on our anniversary and we always like to kind of snuggle when we're here. Montez Fairchild. This is uh, one of several birthdays that I've celebrated at Gino's. I love the food. I love the people. I love um, being sung to in Italian, saying happy birthday to me. And uh, it's just a very pleasant experience. We come here not only for birthdays, but for just any days, any time, any opportunity that we get. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas!
Cheetos. My name is Kaylee Mobley. I drive 30 minutes from Bastrop to Monroe to eat at Gino's. It's my favorite Italian restaurant. Um, I will say if it's your first time, you have to get the cheesy bread and the chicken Alfredo. Those are the best. For the second time eating, I would get the lasagna or spaghetti and meatballs. At least you said you've been coming here 50 years. At least. <laughs> Hi, I'm Beth Romig. Grew up in El Dorado, went to Louisiana Tech. Love Gino's cheesy bread. It's the best. Lasagna is awesome. The best ever. And you're going there soon? Yes! Thanksgiving weekend, I will be there. Chino's. <laughs> I'm here at Cat Island behind, uh, in front of the uh, thousand year old cypress tree and uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to Gino's uh, after eating the lasagna up there a few years back. It was fabulous. All the greatest wishes to you all. Godmother, I want to thank you for a great interview and it's such a great honor to be part of the Briscotta family with what my grandfather and you and Uncle Philip and Uncle Frank have done and John. I mean, you've kept this legacy in Monroe. It's just a great institution. So if, well, people, if people want to know more about how to get to Gino's, you have a, a website? Oh, yes. Let's look up Gino's Italian Restaurant on the Internet. We're there. Right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Celebrating Ciao. Culture. Celebrating Cultures organized the content from our show into an app called New Orleans Insider Tours. Download the app to see views of the New Orleans skyline from various rooftop bars around the city. Go up to Rosie's on the Roof. It gives you a great perspective of the city. New Orleans has a tremendous amount to offer, but leaving the city and exploring Louisiana is a must. If you'd like to enjoy the coast of Louisiana, go down to Delacro. If you'd like to know the history of the river, go up to the Great River Road Museum in Darrow. Poverty Point is located between Monroe and Tallulah, Louisiana, and is one of 23 World Heritage Sites in America. Welcome back to Celebrating Culture. We're here today in Monroe, Louisiana at Frenchman's Bend Golf Course, where the Cancer League is having a fundraiser, and I'm with Mary Linda McCann, who is the president of the Cancer League. Mary Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So tell us, you guys do a great job here in North Louisiana because it's such a big need to help people. We are the fundraising arm for the Louisiana Cancer Foundation for our education and research. And we raise money to help cancer patients in Northeast Louisiana where they're getting treatment here or elsewhere. We provide gas cards for transportation, lodging. We can provide help with pharmaceuticals, nutritional supplements. I think everybody's had somebody that's touched by cancer. Even however comfortable you may be beforehand, a cancer diagnosis changes your life. Cancer League is in its 20th year now. Over those years, we've raised over $2 million to help over 5,000 patients in Northeast Louisiana. Cancer Foundation League has two main fundraisers a year, our golf tournament and a cocktail gala fundraiser in January of every year. The golf tournament is the Teresa Marsala Memorial Golf Tournament. Teresa was a past president of our league who died suddenly and unexpectedly, so we named the golf tournament in her memory. Her two daughters are active members of the Cancer Foundation League and have chaired this golf tournament for several years now in their mother's honor. And we really couldn't have two more enthusiastic people to be in charge of this event every year. We're out here for the 11th annual Teresa Marcella Memorial Golf Tournament, which is one of uh, the Cancer Foundation League's main fundraisers that we do each year. This tournament is important for many reasons. First, it's honoring a lady who happened to be our mother who had a vision. Her vision was to have a golf tournament. And through this golf tournament, we would raise money for the cancer patients of Northeast Louisiana. And so after her passing, the ladies of this organization got together and put this tournament together to honor her memory. And over the years, it's grown. It's fun. We have a great day and we raise money for our local patients here in Northeast Louisiana, which we know is a big need. And I'm with Heather Lee, who's the president of the Cancer League Foundation. Heather, welcome to the show. Thanks. So Heather, this is a great golf tournament, a beautiful day. Tell us about it. They do a great job each year of getting sponsors for each of the holes. So we have a margarita hole. 
sponsored by Iron Cactus, so that's always a popular one. Can I have a margarita? Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. We have uh, catfish hole, pork chop hole. I mean, we just try to really make these creative and, and fun. So you're looking forward to what's next. But is even a hole where you shoot a gun? Absolutely, absolutely. So for $5, you get to shoot a gun, Instead right? Of driving the it, ball. It's, I mean, who wouldn't want that? <laughs> Go for it. Hole in one. All right, girls. Ready to go. Is that it? It had a draw. Monroe is a small town, really. It's a great community. It is a phenomenal community. I mean, obviously, I'm from here, so I'm pretty passionate about it. And it's not just Washita, it's all the surrounding areas in Northeast Louisiana that we try to focus on and help. We've helped 5,300, over 5,300 cancer patients in this area since we've created. And this course is a beautiful course. Yes, it is. We've had this here for many years, and, and they, they work really well with us. If someone wants to know more, is there a website? Absolutely. It's the cancerfoundationleague.com. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Celebrating Culture. Hi, welcome to New Orleans Insider Tours. We've created 10 apps for you to really experience Louisiana from an insider point of view. The Little Palermo app is free. It has 50 points of interest in the French Quarter of New Orleans, showcasing monuments, restaurants, and other points of Sicilian influence into Louisiana culture. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Celebrating Culture and how Sicilian customs have influenced the traditions of New Orleans and America. There are many organizations that will offer to help clean cemeteries and grave sites. If you're blessed with a family, remember children learn what they live, and them watching you take care of your ancestors' grave site will encourage them to do the same. Of all the people that have been here that have worked on, yeah. worked with busting tables and all, who was the best? You were really good, <laughs> Godson. There you go. I was the best. And I got a good nephew, John, that worked hard here, too. That was better, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all were both first class. All right. <laughs> you think this is on? It's on now. You know, when it's green, it's on. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You say I messed up and keep going. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we're going to go. This is take two. All right. And my favorite monster truck is Hot Wheel Monster Truck. I love Hot Wheels. Me, too. And... My favorite is Hot Wheels, Monster Trucks, and Hot Wheels. And the end. Perfect. The end. Oh man, look at the sauce on that pork chop. Is this your sauce? This is my wife's grandfather's sauce. 125 year old recipe out of old Mexico. Old Mexico? Old Mexico. What's in it? Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, I, I, I bottle and sell probably 150 gallons of each every year. I'll take a gallon, maybe two.